Good morning everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Unplug TV Australia. In today's episode I would like to talk about the battery health and what you can do if your state of health is low. And as you already know from my other videos we have the regulation here in Australia that the battery state of health of the Outlander PHEV is not going to lose more than 20% over the lifetime of the vehicle. And this is something which is published on the Mitsubishi website here in Australia. Back in March or April this year, 2018, they have changed this wording on the website and it now says there is only a small reduction in pure EV range to be expected over the lifetime of the vehicle. I recently made a video about um, this. If you haven't seen this, um, please watch it there. So not more than 20% of degradation over the lifetime of the vehicle. This is a very strong commitment which was available on the website for at least four years and that's what we are going to hold Mitsubishi accountable for. And I have, I have now received so many emails from you guys from all over the world. It's not only from Australia. A lot of people have contacted me from Norway, from the UK, from Germany, from Canada even, from the US. Brand new Mitsubishi Outlander PHEVs degrading already. So something is obviously going on with this battery management system or the battery itself. We don't know exactly. And a lot of people putting a lot of effort into finding out what's actually going on. This should not be the primary topic of this video now because I want to talk about what you can do if your state of health is already low. And as always, if something is not right with your car, you go back to your dealership, to your workshop and ask them for help. And this is exactly what you should do in this case as well. And of course, people, including myself, have already done this. They have spoken to their dealerships and to their workshops and said, look, my PHEV is not performing that well anymore. The pure EV range is already reduced. The car is only two years old and the, the PHEV watchdog is showing me a reduction in state of health. And so far, most of the dealerships, most of the formants, most of the, they are just scratching their heads. As per now, August 2018, I have not heard from anyone worldwide telling me they have a competent dealership with someone with good knowledge about the Outlander PHEV and the battery management unit, the software, the battery. So obviously nobody exactly knows what's going on with the PHEVs. They are, they are not trained in the PHEV. And I know for a fact some of the technicians, they have attended training about the Outlander PHEV provided by Mitsubishi, but still the knowledge seems to be very, very low. And then of course you look up the forums, you look on Facebook, and then you're finding comments like, oh, you just go to your dealer and they're doing a cell smoothing procedure and your battery is back to 100%. And you say, wow, that is great. So I talked to my dealer. And, and quite, quite a few people have actually done this um, procedure um, with their cars now. And the, the, results, the results are mixed. You, you may have seen my other video here where I was talking about battery degradation after the cell smoothing procedure. So anyway, you're reading through all these comments on Facebook and on the forums and on YouTube as well. And you think, okay, that's a cell smoothing procedure. It does something with the battery and it gets back to 100%. With this knowledge, you go back to your dealer and tell them, oh, look, can you do a cell smoothing procedure on my car? The battery is not good anymore. It all brings it back up to 100%. And the, the dealer is again scratching their head and said, what the hell is a cell smoothing procedure? So I want to I wanna explain in this video what kind of procedures the dealerships actually can perform on your car. And I, 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 try, to, I try to collect all these information from, from different sources now together and to make, to make sense out of it. And of course it's always good if you know maybe a little bit more than your dealer. 
and can push them in the right direction. So what they usually do when you bring in the car, they hook up their MUT device, which is a little device um, connected to your car and it talks to the computer inside the car. And they have the ability to start several procedures on the car now. And it's, it's very important to get the terminology right to explain exactly what kind of procedure they have to do. If, if you go and see a dealership, there, is, there are only two options they can actually perform on your car. And probably the most important one is the DBCAM, I call it DBCAM, is the Drive Battery Capacity Automatic Measurement. This procedure can take up to 72 hours. So bear this in mind when you bring in your car. The dealer may want to hold on to your car for a while. There is a service bulletin available on the internet which explains exactly how this procedure works. So the technician will hook up your car to the MUT device. So they will discharge the car with the electric heater or aircon until only one blue bar of your battery gauge is visible. And then they will start the process on the MUT device to automatically measure the capacity of your battery. So they're, they're, they're plugging in the car and start the charge mode and start their MUT device. And the MUT device basically measures the whole capacity of the battery until the battery is full. Before they start the process, they take note of the capacity, what the MUT device tells them, so the state of health, and compare this figure with the actual capacity the device measures while the car is charging. And sometimes this measurement can fail which will be displayed on the MUT device and they have to start the whole process again. And that's why the procedure can take up to 72 hours. So and once the procedure is finished, this new learned figure will be programmed into the battery management unit. So eventually the car will know the exact state of health of the battery. And hopefully the state of health will increase with this procedure. But it can actually decrease as well. It can make the whole thing worse. I have read about it twice so far. So keep this in mind. It can either increase or decrease your state of health. Most likely it will increase though. So and then let's talk about this cell smoothing procedure. Because this is another option the dealer can do on your car. And this is what everyone talks about, it's the cell smoothing procedure. So this procedure takes only two hours to perform on your car. And, but nobody exactly knows what the procedure actually does to the battery. We think it will, it is kind of a deep balancing process procedure they perform on the battery. So it might be, and, and this is just a guess, it might be a very slow charge to a certain state of charge and then they do a balancing basically all the way back and recharge the battery again and do this in a cycle a couple of times to, to really equalize, to make all the cells the same voltage. So there is, no, there is no official service bulletin available from Mitsubishi on the internet. This is all a bit secret stuff what they are doing. But we think it's only a deep balancing procedure they perform on your battery. Because the whole procedure takes only up to two hours and they, they can't really discharge and fully charge the battery. So it must be something, must be something they are doing on a certain state of charge and just balancing the whole pack. And this the official cell smoothing procedure. Well, and of course, then there is the BMU reset procedure they can do. So this means it will reset all information, all data in the battery management unit and will erase all learned information. And with any other reset you're doing on your tablet or computer or mobile phone, you have to start from scratch. And this is exactly what happens when they do a BMU reset. It will erase all the data in the BMU and the system has to relearn the state of health of your battery. And I think this is exactly what they have done to my car for several reasons. One of them is the battery state of health went back to 100%, which is highly unlikely to be the true state of health after two and a half years of ownership of the car and 55,000 kilometers. 
I'm pretty sure there must have been some degradation happening in the battery during that time. So in fact, it cannot go back to 100%. So the problem with the BMU reset is, you are not supposed to do a BMU reset unless you swap the traction battery of the car. Because, as I just explained, the battery will already have a certain amount of degradation and the software, the battery management unit, does not know anything about this the pump. I should turn off the pump before I record. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. So the BMU software does not know about this degradation because they have just pressed the reset button and have erased all information, all history data the BMU has ever experienced before. So the BMU thinks now it has a brand new battery with 100% state of health. And now we have to do some speculation again because we really don't know what is happening now when the battery has already degraded but the BMU thinks it's a 100% battery. It now could be the case that the battery management unit cuts into the reserve capacity of the battery to, to give you access to the 100% state of health. And then after a while it realizes it can't, it can't give the performance, it can't give the capacity it actually expects from the battery. So there must be something wrong with the battery and it lowers the state of health again. As you have seen in my video before, this happens very quickly. The very next day, the very next days, the, the next weeks will be a, a free fall in state of health. So it doesn't take too long for the battery management unit to catch up and realize the battery is clearly not on 100% state of health. And the manual of the MUD actually tells the dealer, do not do a battery management unit reset unless you change the drive battery. If you do this accidentally and you do the BMU reset, you have to do a DB cam afterwards to relearn the actual capacity and, and put these figures back into the BMU. From, from, what I, from what I gained from the forums and everything, when people got their um, DB cam done, the state of health has never risen to 100% for them. It went back to 96, 97%, but never to 100. And so far only Barry's and my car had this reset done and the battery state of health went back to 100%, but decreased fairly quickly again in the next couple of days and weeks after that. Yeah, and uh, apparently there are other procedures on the MUD device available um, to select from, which is just a, a, a battery cell measurement report or something. I've seen uh, screenshots on the forums as well. It basically gives you a report of, of what voltage every cell at this moment of measurement have. And to be honest, this is exactly what the PHEV watchdog shows you as well in the um, battery condition function. So th the dealership will give you a printout of um, 80 battery cells and their voltage at the point of measurement. And this, this tells nothing about battery health. There's no, it's nowhere mentioned on, on, this, on this report what the actual battery health is. It just gives you the voltages. And if they are staying in a certain certain range to each other, is within a certain boundary, um, the dealer will give you a thumbs up and say, look, the battery is fine. I haven't heard from anyone where the dealer said, oh, that's not good, we need to do something, or there might be a faulty cell or something like this. So never heard of anything like this before. And. And then, of course, there's the fun factor when people asking their dealerships for a battery report. And, and they are actually getting a report of the 12 volt system battery when they pick up their car. So 
this highlights again that the dealerships most likely have no absolutely zero knowledge about the Outlander PHEV. Most of them are not even aware that this car has a traction battery in the floor. When I went back to the dealership recently, a couple of weeks ago, to get this rare caliper thingy fixed, the guy who booked, who booked in my car looked at the car and said, what, what is this for? What is this for a, a model? And I said, that's some PHEV, that's an Outlander PHEV, electric. And he said, oh, I wasn't aware Mitsubishi is actually doing them. And I said, yeah, they started with the IME for a couple of years ago, and this is the more advanced plug-in hybrid electric vehicle now, PHEV. And he scratched his head and said, okay, I've never heard of this before, I'll book it in for the brake caliper. Yeah, um, okay, I, I must admit, this guy was very young, but still he had never heard about the PHEV before. So I gave him a rundown in a couple of minutes, explained what the car actually does and what a hybrid is, how to charge the battery and all this kind of stuff, you know? That's what you do. You teach your dealership. So guys, I hope this gives you a little bit more understanding what these procedures are, what they do and what the differences are. I know this is all fairly technical and, and usually we shouldn't have to deal with all this stuff at all. This is all dealer workshop but when people are talking about the cell smoothing procedure, you need to be very specific. Are you talking about the DB cam or are you talking about the cell smoothing procedure? Or are you talking about the cell battery report? What are you talking about? So when you go back to your dealer, be very, very clear. So if, if they keep your car for a couple of days, this is most likely a good thing because then they are doing the right procedure, which can take up to 72 hours. And if you can pick it up within a couple of hours only, they probably have done the cell smoothing procedure, which is the deep balancing. And if you turn on your car and the PHEV watchdog shows you 100% state of health, they most likely have only done the reset, which they should not do. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure if I have covered all the little details of all the procedures. If you have more information about any of these procedures, if you know anything more, please put your comments down below in the section so everyone can read them. And I also would like to thank uh, Richie, Telmu and Daniel from the forums on Facebook um, helping me out, giving me information about these procedures. I gathered little bits and pieces here and there, but uh, these three guys are awesome. They are a good source of knowledge, so if you have any questions, um, contact them directly. They're always happy to help. So thank you guys very much for putting this all together, managing all your forums and um, helping basically the whole community out with um, all these questions and answers, of course. Okay, guys, so far I have to play with the dogs now. They are already waiting for me. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for your support. This is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia, signing off. You stay charged and we see us in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.